Jake the Film Guy, microbudgeter.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about 100 tips for your video production business. Love is a burning thing, and it makes a fiery ring. Buckle up, it's going to be an action-packed video. Now, I'm not gonna explain every single little term in this, so you might have to do some additional homework. If you like this content, if you're getting value out of what we do here, I want you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Tip number one, and there are no particular order. Here we go, let's dive right in. Tip number one, make sure you always get something in writing when you sell a digital product in the course of your video production business. Something that acknowledges from the buyer that they intended to buy your digital product. That way, you're covered in case you ever get faced with a chargeback. Number two, start with at most two social media profiles and since you're in video production, you might as well make one of them LinkedIn. Numero tres. Make sure your branding is consistent across the board. Website, social media, business card. If you like Comic Sans, make it Comic Sans everywhere. Pick one type of service, one niche, and stick with it. If you're gonna be the ace wedding videographer in your town, be the ace wedding videographer in your town. Be able to sell your unique selling proposition to anybody, whether they're six years old or 60 years old. Do the homework, a pros and cons list on all of your assets before you pull the trigger on getting the LLC. Use your city and county hashtag with everything. Make it a point to comment on posts that you can find under those hashtags several times every working day. Never ever start a job without a signature from the check writer slash decision maker. Worst case scenario, don't hand over the footage until you've gotten a signature from a head honcho, if not the head honcho. Always bring spare batteries, extra memory cards, power adapters, the things that you take for granted, maybe even a second XLR cable. Bring them! If your subject is having a hard time, have them take a sip of water. Helps them reset, helps them recalibrate. If you could only get one piece of gear in addition to your camera and tripod, make it a slider. If you're as broke as a joke, start with the free software like DaVinci Resolve. Make sure you know how to color correct before you start color grading. Don't go into debt for your business. Practice sales training every single working day. All you need are an internet connection and or a library card as much as you can, as much as you financially can, outsource. You only need one 12 hour film shoot with someone to decide if you want to bring them on board a bigger project. Use a software like QuickBooks, linked below, to track your mileage in the background. On that note, Dave Ramsey says 95% of us will take the standard deduction every year anyways. At the very minimum, you need to learn Accounting 101, Accounting 102, even if it's just through YouTube. Always make sure you're communicating with the decision maker before you ask for a signature. Always keep a pin on you. Keep two. Always keep a good, newly minted business card on your person at all times. Keep two of them. Anytime a really outgoing personality says they have an idea and they want to get together with you and talk about it, run the other way. Unless they're in a position to actually talk about executing on that idea, if they're just talking about an idea, book it out of there. Know your floor price and don't do anything less than that floor price. Don't even bother trying to prospect the big chains or even regional chains. If you're going to serve businesses, stick with the small mom and pop businesses right in your backyard. Just because you have a signed contract, it does not mean you have a gig. Unless there is a contract that has been signed and some kind of deposit in place, you don't have a job. If you absolutely must get a website, start with just a one page website. Squarespace has some very simple, very intuitive one page layouts that you can use. When you're starting out, tell everybody you meet, even strangers, even the cashier that is checking out your groceries, the customer service rep that you talk to at Verizon, everybody, tell them you're in business. Even our favorite directors have to pitch studio executives, financiers, the whole gamut. 
So we need to get comfortable every single working day with this concept of pitching ideas and just sucking it up if we get no, if we are rejected, because this is a part of the process. Whether it's trying to close somebody on a deal or get somebody to work with you on a micro budget film project or even just to get the film commission to call you back, get used to pitching. If you have a family, be in a constant dialogue with your wife about the health of your marriage. If it's your husband, talk to your husband about how you guys are doing. Make sure you're spending quality time with the kids if you have kids. Don't sacrifice your family in pursuit of a career. Click on the Google ads for the other video producers in your town. You just might learn a thing or two about what they're doing to attract attention. Find a living, breathing person in your community, your church, your circle, and if they are running their own business, have several lunches with them. You might learn a thing or two. If you are a follower of Jesus, spend time in the Word every day. Decide early on if you're going to offer discounts to nonprofits, schools, churches, veterans, first responders. Figure out what that looks like and be consistent. If you're going to use an email service provider, start with a freemium one like MailChimp. If you don't absolutely need it, don't buy it when you're starting out. Stick to renting gear from sites like LensRentals.com or using a freemium service to its maximum potential before splurging and buying for the paid subscription. Leverage your cash wisely when you're starting out. Heck, always leverage your cash wisely. When you're just getting going, don't worry about using a custom email address. Just stick with a free Gmail and it's free 15 gigabytes of space through Google Drive. That's all you need to get going. Always, always ask a vendor for a discount. And if you're a veteran, you are to be in this practice in this mode all the time anyways. If your client dogs on the previous vendor, run, get out of there, get out of Dodge. Think twice before doing a gig for an international client who has no I don't know the plural word for this. If they don't have a nexus in the United States, if they don't have a place of business in the United States, if they could retreat to the other side of the border, for example, Canada, without any other US presence, they could hose you and you would have little to no recourse. So use discernment before agreeing to do work for an international client in that context. Learn about the arbitration clause and use it in every single one of your work agreements. Learn from established, successful business leaders. Read nonfiction, and don't just make it all filmmaking books. Don't try to be great at cinematography, drone videography, 3D animation. Pick at most one. If you can't explain what you do in six seconds, you're toast. If your client gives you the classic, we'll think about it and we'll let you know if we're interested, they're not interested. At that point, you have two options. Decide if it's worth following up again creatively at some point down the road, or just recasting your fishing line. After all, there are seven billion plus people and counting on God's green earth. Whatever social medias you use to interact with people, be consistent. For example, don't post everything under the sun on your Facebook. If you truly, from the inside out, know that you want to go and tell visual stories, hopefully ones that point people to the hope we have in God Almighty, then you really need to make sure your Facebook is about filmmaking. Don't be sharing cat videos. Don't be sharing funny memes. Don't be sharing home improvement info. You need to make it consistent. Rinse and repeat across the board. Make sure that you have absolute 100% in perpetuity rights, licensing, the ability to use that piece of intellectual property, whether it's a piece of video, a sound effect, a music track, before you actually do use it in your video. And if it's a public domain asset, absolutely do the homework to make sure it is 100% a public domain asset. Don't ignore the power of Facebook Messenger to connect with people. As much as possible, 
use the phone over email. Make it a point to learn new things, to experience new experiences. As a creative, your creativity is largely limited by your experiences. You guys doing okay? You still with me? We got 50 more to go. If you found this information useful, go ahead and do this for me. All right, number 51, practice saying no and be okay with offering that with zero explanation behind it. I don't remember if it was Kevin Smith or Quentin Tarantino. I wanna say it was Kevin Smith, but when asked what advice they would give to another film director, they said practice making decisions because you need to be able to answer questions on a dime. So here and now, while you and I as micro-budget filmmakers are learning and growing, we should be practicing even with the little mundane things in everyday life, making decisions and then sticking with our decisions. I may have said number 51 twice. In any event, this is number 53. Always treat the gatekeeper with respect. Every time somebody gives you their business card, follow up with that person. Always, always spell check. If you struggle with grammar, get help. Make sure your communications are correct. Always follow up with somebody. If they're not interested now, at bare minimum, follow up six months down the road because they might be interested then. Find something extra you can do for your client on the house without them asking for it. Which leads me into my next one. Don't just give everything under the sun because your client asks for it. Be okay with letting them know this will run you this much extra. Do not wait until the deadline that you and your client agree on. Don't do that with the first draft, the second draft, or any other subsequent draft. Always look to over deliver by producing a result ahead of time. That's not just so that you win brownie points with them, that's also so you avoid anything like tricky internet outages, maybe even in your area. It's happened to me, it can happen to you. If you can only get one camera, make it an all-in solution, like a Canon cinema camera, something that has XLR inputs, something that has pretty good color, something that does okay with low light, something that also has a built-in waveform monitor, ND filters, so on and so forth. Be okay with saying, I don't know. Don't bluff, don't lie. If you do end up collecting emails through something like a lead magnet, well then do something with that newsletter. Don't just let it sit around and collect cobwebs. Before you ever get a website, make sure you have a business page on Facebook that has your contact information. It's free and it gives you the power of Facebook Messenger that people can use to interact with you. If you're going to be flying often, you should invest in TSA Pre. If you're going on these international adventures, make sure that you can communicate with the people there in that host country what it is you do. Because when they go through your carry-on bag and see all these lithium batteries, they might want to confiscate them. You need to be able to communicate in their native tongue what it is you do and why those need to be going home with you. If it's a talking headpiece, and if it's a long one, see if you can convince your subject to treating it as though it were a live presentation, which means end-to-end -end they have to be able to execute in one fell swoop, hiccups and all. This will save you on editing, and it'll also save them the pain and frustration of having to do multiple takes. After all, when it comes to really long talking head pieces, the more they have to do, the more it becomes scripted, and they become less enthusiastic. So communicate how it is a win-win for both parties. Always, always assume responsibility. If you mess up and you do something to your client's property, you need to be the first to let them know about it. If what you're doing has a script or even just like a loosely organized storyboard, make sure you and your client sign off on that pre-production before going into production. Never, ever, ever accept cash payments. Your client might pay you in cash that is really old school, and then your bank's gonna raise an eyebrow at you when you go and deposit it, and the last thing you wanna do is defraud your bank because maybe you gave them some illegal tender. Don't leave your camera in direct sunlight for very long. If you have wiggle room to get another piece of gear after the camera, tripod, and slider, make it a C-stand. Learn how to bounce light. If possible, invest in a good lavalier mic kit. And if not, rent one. Make sure you always have permission 
to shoot on any location that does not belong to you and or your client. If necessary, get a permit as well. If what you're filming involves loud noises that can be perceived as gunfire, make sure you communicate that to your immediate neighbors and the local authorities by picking up the phone and letting them know. Even then, the local authorities may still come to your film set. It's happened to me, it can happen to you. If you live in LA, you're already well aware of these ramifications. As much as possible, find out important dates to your client, such as their birthday, anniversary, kid's birthday, upcoming bar mitzvah. These are all reasons for you to keep in touch and to send them a note or an email, Facebook message, the sky's the limit. Find a system that will have regular reminders for you to follow up with Uncle Bob. If it's Google Calendar, great. Whatever works for you, stick with it. This next one isn't the norm, but if your client puts money in escrow and they don't actually get started on the project with you, continue to follow up with them as if they are an unsold prospect. The last thing you want to do is be sitting on cash and not ready to rock and roll when it is they have that spark or burst of inspiration, creativity, whatever it is they're looking for or stalling for. Again, may not happen to you, but it could. When you need it and when you can afford it, look for a local insurance broker. Don't bother with the big guys like State Farm. You're a small fry, I'm a small fry. Find that other solopreneur type business, maybe even just a small, small business, an insurance broker so that you can get your general liability and errors and emissions policy. If you are currently renting, check to see if your renter's insurance policy or maybe even a valuable property policy that you have through your insurance may or may not. Just check, see if it'll cover your gear in the event of, say, theft. Don't worry about Facebook ads and Google ads when you're starting out. That will come with time. When you're starting out, you're broke as a joke. The only kind of advertising dollars you should be spending are on the gas you need to get to a networking event that's free and or business cards. Your best tools will be word of mouth, referrals, and in-person, meaning real live networking with other people. When you see those really persistent people on social media constantly advertising their business, constantly promoting their upcoming film, learn from them. Watch how they don't pay attention to the critics or the naysayers. Don't put a lot of faith in an NDA. Within minutes, the person that signs that NDA probably is already sharing it with five or six other team members. In other words, just don't put any stock in an NDA. As much as possible, dictate. Use voice dictation. You're gonna be using your forearms, your wrists, and your fingers for a lot of editing early on as it is. Always be able to give your prospective client an exact quote in the first conversation with them right down to the penny. Be confident about it and don't undersell yourself. Learn how to do this. I have resources at the website. I've even got a spreadsheet that you can use if you're really struggling in this area. Make sure you use a blue light filter on all of your devices. Make sure you back up all of your final deliverables on an external solid state drive and some kind of cloud service. If you have the benefit of a network that you can back it up onto as well, do that as well. Make sure you're paying your estimated taxes. These are quarterly, and if you need help with that, a service like QuickBooks can help you out. If you have any experience with AV, or even if you're just okay with a camera, see if the metro that you are nearest has some live AV gigs that you can go pick up, onesies and twosies here and there. A lot of it is peripheral or tangential to what we do with video production. But at the end of the day, you're gonna pick up a lot more skill you're going to pick up a lot more working knowledge and maybe even a free roll of gaff tape. Never ever ask the what's your budget question. You need to inform your client your floor price right at the beginning of the conversation. This is part of qualifying the client, which I talk about elsewhere. It'll save you and the client hours and hours of frustration. Not every client will use your finished product. Learn to be okay with that. When you're starting out, just get a home-based business. Find a space in your house, maybe an office room, Put a desk and a computer there, boom, that's your office. Not only is it for your sanity, but it's also for the IRS. Until your services have been paid for in full, make sure that you put a watermark on any kind of deliverable that you give to your client. If you're shooting indoors and you need that filled audio, make sure you shut off the HVAC. 
make sure no fans are spinning, etc. If you're shooting outdoors and you need that fill of audio, make sure that you have a blimp and a dead wombat. Make sure you function check all of your gear before taking it onto a paid professional shoot. That means sending it through the whole gamut. Low light tests, high ISO tests, shooting outdoors, shooting indoors. Make sure you test the color grading and the color correcting that goes beforehand in the post suite. Make sure you see what the final deliverable looks like in your client's venue, if at all possible. Don't just assume that the footage you shot is gonna look good on that projector. You need to test these things before it comes down to the wire. If a client was satisfied with your service, ask them to leave a review for you on LinkedIn, Google, Facebook. We have not because we ask not. Respond to all your comments on social media. If you've tried exhausting every possible way that you can think of of finding a client's name, a prospect's name, and you're still just running into a brick wall, go to your Secretary of State's website and do a search for that person's business. Last but not least, I am a poor substitute for legal and or financial counsel. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. If you found this information at all helpful, I want you to go and get your video production business rolling, moving and grooving. Do your work for the glory of God and the glory of God alone. Keep creating with the King of Kings. I'll see you on the next video.